In Exodus chapter 22 verse 20, God commands, whoever sacrifices to any god, other than the Lord alone, shall be devoted to destruction, ESV. The Hebrew word used here is charim, meaning, to curse, annihilate, or destroy. The literal interpretation is that the Hebrew person who sacrificed to another god was to be put to death. Idolaters received capital punishment. The use of the phrase, devoted to destruction, elsewhere in the Old Testament confirms this understanding. In Numbers chapter 21 verse 3 we read, And the Lord heeded the voice of Israel and gave over the Canaanites, and they devoted them and their cities to destruction, ESV. The Niv translates it as, they completely destroyed them in their towns. The idea of being devoted to destruction included destroying these cities. In Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 34 we read a review of Israel's time in the wilderness. The narrative includes, and we captured all his cities at that time and devoted to destruction every city, men, women, and children. We left no survivors, ESV. In this case, devoted to destruction, clearly indicates death. Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 6 offers a similar use of this phrase, and we devoted them to destruction, as we did to Sihon the king of Heshbon, ESV. Sihon was a king they had previously put to death. Ever pondered the concept of being devoted to destruction? It may seem like a paradox, but it's a fascinating concept that's been around for centuries. Now, when we speak of being devoted to destruction, your mind might race to thoughts of chaos, devastation, or perhaps even anarchy. Yet, it's not just about the physical obliteration of things, it's a multifaceted concept that often intertwines with the very fabric of human history, philosophy, and psyche. From the earliest civilizations to the modern world, this paradoxical devotion has manifested in various forms and contexts. It has been a driving force during wars, revolutions, and even in the pursuit of scientific discovery. It's a concept that has journeyed through time, evolving and adapting, yet retaining its core essence. So, ready to delve deeper into this enigma? Let's dive into the origins of this intriguing concept and see how it has evolved over time. The concept of devotion to destruction has roots in ancient times often tied to religious beliefs and rituals. Let's take a step back in time and immerse ourselves in the world of the ancient Aztecs. This civilization, flourishing in the heart of Mexico, had a religious practice that might make your skin crawl today, human sacrifice. Yet for the Aztecs, this was not a gruesome act of violence, but a devout demonstration of their dedication to the gods. They believed that by offering the life force of a human, they could appease and sustain their deities. It's a stark reminder that devotion to destruction was not always seen as a negative concept, but rather a necessary part of maintaining balance in the universe. Moving across the globe to the ancient lands of Israel, we find another example in the concept of harem. This was a religious commandment that called for the total destruction of enemies people, animals, and property alike. It was a part of their warfare and seen as a divine mandate. This was not an act of gratuitous violence, but a demonstration of their faith and devotion to God. These examples might seem extreme, but they underline a crucial point. The notion of being devoted to destruction is not simply about mindless obliteration. It's about the belief in a higher purpose a greater good that justifies and even necessitates these acts of destruction. This is not to say that we should condone or replicate these practices today, but rather, it helps us understand the cultural and historical contexts in which they were born. As we journey through history, we'll uncover how these ancient practices have evolved and taken on new meanings in different eras. The devotion to destruction is a complex concept one that has been interpreted and reinterpreted throughout the ages. As we can see, the concept of being devoted to destruction was not always as negative as it sounds today. It was often a part of a larger belief system. Moving forward to the Middle Ages, the concept of devotion to destruction took on a new form. As we journey into the Middle Ages, a time of knights, castles, and the Crusades, we find the concept of devotion to destruction evolving. While the ancients may have interpreted it in terms of physical conflict or natural disasters, the Middle Ages saw the concept wrapped in an intricate tapestry of religion and politics. Imagine a time when the world was largely ruled by the church, where religion was not just a personal belief but a societal framework. 
It was in this context that the idea of a holy war emerged. The Crusades, a series of religious wars sanctioned by the church, were embroiled in this very idea. Soldiers, known as crusaders, were not merely fighting a war. They were on a divine mission, devoted to the destruction of perceived enemies of the faith. But what did this devotion look like? It was a fervor, a zeal that was fueled by faith and the promise of spiritual rewards. It was a belief so strong that it justified violence, destruction, and even death. This was a time when devotion to destruction was not seen as a negative trait, but rather a necessary sacrifice for the greater good, for the preservation of faith. Yet it wasn't just about religion. The concept of devotion to destruction also played out on the political stage. Kings and queens used it as a tool, a means to consolidate power and control territories. This devotion was displayed in the form of wars, invasions, and strategic alliances all aimed at the destruction of rivals and potential threats. The Middle Ages, a time often seen as dark and chaotic, offered a new perspective on devotion to destruction. It was no longer just an act of physical force or a result of natural calamity. It had turned into an ideological tool, a lever used by the powerful to shape societies and control masses. The Middle Ages gave the concept a new form, making it a part of the political and religious discourse. In the modern era, the understanding of devotion to destruction has again shifted. Once a concept rooted in warfare and religion, it has evolved to take on a more psychological and introspective meaning. Today, it is often linked to destructive behaviors, particularly those that an individual inflicts upon themselves. Consider, for example, addiction, whether it's to substances, behaviors, or even thoughts. Addiction is a form of self-destruction. It's a cycle where individuals knowingly harm themselves yet feel compelled to continue. This is a clear example of a modern interpretation of devotion to destruction, a persistent, almost obsessive engagement in actions that one knows are harmful. Similarly, self-harm is another manifestation of this concept. Here, the destruction is not metaphorical, but literal. Yet, the principle remains the same, a devotion to actions that cause harm, despite awareness of their destructive nature. Literature, too, has embraced this concept, often using it to explore the human condition. Authors weave narratives about characters who are devoted to their own downfall, their stories serving as a mirror to our own struggles and fears. It's in these tales that we see the concept of devotion to destruction at its most poignant and powerful. Philosophy as well grapples with this idea. Thinkers have pondered the allure of destruction, why we sometimes feel drawn to what harms us. They've proposed theories, from the search for control to a desire for transformation, all attempting to decipher this complex relationship we have with destruction. The modern interpretation of the concept is much more personal and introspective, focusing on the individual's relationship with destruction. It's no longer about the wholesale destruction of cities or peoples, but about the battles we wage within ourselves. It's about the destructive behaviors we engage in, the harm we inflict upon ourselves, and our strange devotion to these acts of self-destruction. Today, the concept of devotion to destruction plays a significant role in our societal understanding of destructive behaviors. It's a fascinating paradox, isn't it? This idea that a person can be so devoted to a path that ultimately leads to their own downfall. We see this concept woven into the very fabric of our discussions around mental health and addiction. Often individuals battling these issues show a kind of devotion to their destructive patterns. It's not that they want to damage themselves or their lives, but there's a certain pull, a certain commitment to the very thing causing them harm. In mental health scenarios, this could manifest as self-sabotage, self-harm, or even chronic negative thinking. The individual may not even realize they're devoted to their own destruction. It's a subconscious loyalty that can be deeply ingrained and difficult to recognize. Turning to addiction, the idea of devotion to destruction becomes even more apparent. Whether it's alcohol, drugs, gambling, or any other form of addictive behavior, the individual often shows an unwavering devotion to the substance or activity. Despite the clear harm it's causing, there's a relentless pursuit, a fierce loyalty to the source of their destruction. So where does the role of this concept fit in therapy and recovery? Well, understanding this devotion is often the first step towards healing. 
Recognizing this self-destructive commitment allows individuals to challenge it, to question why they're so loyal to something so harmful. It's about breaking down the devotion, dismantling it piece by piece, to make way for healthier commitments. In a broader sense, understanding the role of devotion to destruction can also help society create more effective prevention and intervention strategies. It's not just about treating the symptom, but understanding the root cause, the devotion that's driving these destructive behaviors. The concept has come a long way from its ancient roots, but it still holds a significant place in our understanding of human behavior. It's a reminder that sometimes the things we're most devoted to can also be the things that cause us the most harm. What does the future hold for the concept of devotion to destruction? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? As we stand on the brink of a future ripe with possibilities, the evolution of this concept is more intriguing than ever. In the realm of psychology, we're constantly uncovering new layers of the human mind. These strides in understanding mental processes could greatly influence our interpretation of devotion to destruction. Will we find that this devotion is rooted in some deep-seated cognitive process? Could we, with the help of advanced psychological techniques, steer individuals away from destructive tendencies and towards more constructive pursuits? These are questions that psychology might answer in the not-so-distant future. Now, consider the field of neuroscience. This discipline has already given us fascinating insights into the workings of the human brain. With the advent of sophisticated neuroimaging techniques and a growing understanding of neuroplasticity, we may be able to pinpoint the exact neural pathways involved in destructive behavior. Imagine being able to identify and even alter the neural circuits that fuel a person's devotion to destruction. It's a tantalizing prospect, isn't it? But as our knowledge expands, so does the complexity of the questions we face. Will we ever be able to fully comprehend why some individuals are drawn to destruction? Is it a product of nature or nurture, or perhaps an intricate interplay of both? And if we do manage to unravel this riddle, what ethical considerations will we then have to grapple with? The future of devotion to destruction is shrouded in uncertainty, but one thing is certain. Our understanding of it will keep evolving. As we continue to explore the depths of the human mind and unlock the secrets of the brain, we may find ourselves redefining what it means to be devoted to destruction. Only time will tell how our understanding of devotion to destruction will continue to evolve. And as we venture into this uncharted territory, we can only hope that our discoveries will lead us towards a more empathetic, compassionate understanding of this complex phenomenon. We've covered a lot of ground, from ancient rituals to modern psychology. In our journey through time, we've traced the evolution of the concept of devotion to destruction. It's a fascinating trip, unraveling the threads of history, culture, and human nature. Let's take a moment to look back. We started with the ancient origins of this concept where it was often tied to religious rituals and war practices. Societies believed in the divine command of total annihilation of certain people or things, a practice seen as a form of intense devotion or commitment. This was a time when destruction was not just a physical act, but a spiritual one, a form of sacrifice, a testament of faith. Then we moved into the Middle Ages, where the concept took on a more symbolic meaning. It was no longer about literal destruction, but rather the internal struggle of the self. Monks and hermits in their pursuit of spiritual purity devoted themselves to the destruction of worldly desires and sinful thoughts. It was a period of introspection and self-flagellation where destruction was seen as a path to redemption and enlightenment. In the modern era, the concept of devotion to destruction has evolved yet again. Today, it is often associated with self-destructive behaviors and societal ills. We see it in the form of addiction, obsession, and harmful ideologies. Yet, it's also tied to positive change and progress. After all, sometimes old structures need to be torn down to make way for the new. Finally, we looked at the future of devotion to destruction. In an increasingly complex world, this concept will continue to shape our societies and our individual lives. It's a reminder that destruction, in its various forms, is an integral part of the human experience. It's a complex concept with a rich history, 
and understanding it can give us a unique insight into the human condition. So, next time you hear the phrase, devoted to destruction, remember it's more than just a phrase. It's a window into our collective past, present, and potential future. In Joshua chapter 6 verse 17, Jericho was devoted to destruction. We read, and the city and all that is within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction, ESV. In Joshua chapter 10 verse 28 the same fate befalls the city of Makkedah. Exodus chapter 22 verse 20 reveals that the punishment for Jews who sacrificed to any god other than Yahweh was that they be put to death under the Mosaic law. However, in the time of the judges in the pre-captivity kingdom, idol worship among the Jews was a perennial problem. God had made it clear that idolatry was worthy of death. Yet many wicked people and leaders through Israel's history resorted to open idol worship in ways that brought God's judgment upon them from other nations. The enforcement of this command can be found in 1 Kings chapter 18. In this account, Elijah challenged King Ahab's 400 prophets of Baal to call down fire from heaven. The God who answered would be the true God. When the Lord God answered, Elijah commanded, Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let anyone get away. They seized them, and Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley and slaughtered there. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 40. This command notes God's displeasure with the worship of other gods. He presents himself as the one God who calls every person to worship him and to believe in his son Jesus for eternal life. John chapter 3 verse 16.